What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Jedi Jive. My name is Mike, and joining me again is my sister, Jenny. Hey, friends. It's our favorite time of the week because we get to react to Falcon and the Winter yeah. Soldier, episode three. This one's called The Power Broker, and the thumbnail has Zemo in it, so feel pretty safe saying that we're going to go get Zemo in this episode. Yeah, we're going to bust him out of jail. Yeah, Sam and Bucky were saying we need to, they need to go get Zemo because he basically knows about the super serum and super soldiers. And, and what Hydra was doing he, all those years. He might have an answer to some of the questions we have about what's going on yeah. with the Flag Smashers and the Power Broker. And yeah. It's funny because they, they name dropped the Power Broker. We went into the show thinking that Zemo was, okay, he's going to be the villain. But like, you know, there's a good chance Zemo is going to go back to being like the anti-hero for all we know. He's yeah. just, I mean, it's kind of hard to predict but the power broker may end up being the main villain. I mean, who knows? Maybe Zemo does have an interest in, in taking down the power broker. It's it's hard to say at this time. It's but... hard to say because we don't know who that is or what his or her connections. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, this show has been dealing with some really important, like, real-world current themes, mm -hmm. like racism mm -hmm. in America or, you know, the plight of being a veteran. Immigration. Immig all these things, yeah. yeah. So there's definitely a lot of, like, real-world real, real world topics that we're dealing with here. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously, when we were watching WandaVision, like, grief was, like, the main theme, and, like, that's obviously a very real-world thing. But, you know, obviously, there are Marvel-only topics, like the blip, for instance. That's not a real-world thing, but, like, seeing that, that there's multiple factions of people, people who were here during the blip and people who weren't here during the blip. Yeah. And even people like Sam's sister who are like, dude, like y'all weren't here. And while we, well, you want, y'all weren't here. We were like picking up mm -hmm. the pieces and mm -hmm. like making the world work again. So the flag smashers kind of follow that philosophy of like, we want our world back kind of thing. And it's, yeah. it's, there's a lot of gray area between who's good and who's bad. And, and one division was a way for the characters as well as us to escape from our challenging reality for a few minutes each week and this is diving right into our reality and forcing us to confront very well put. all of our shared issues head on and i love it i'm really excited yeah. so i want to watch i'm this. loving it too let's jump yeah. in <laughs> when half of us came back it was time to rejoice and reunite <laughs> the global repatriation council oh. helping you get back to the way things were the <laughs> pandemic related message yeah, right the, there. The piano music. Set, it's, it's, restore. This rebuild. is like one of those little commercials from WandaVision. Yeah. It's so recognizable. What are you up to now, Walmart? <laughs> Don't give him a second. It's on we Walmart. Shred hmm. or breathe. We know she came through here. Now, where'd she go? Ooh. Do you know who I am? Uh oh. He's going dark already, man. Yes, I do, and I don't care. <laughs> America's standing has fallen a bit in the world, it seems. I'm gonna go in alone. Why? Because you're an Avenger. You know how he feels about that. Look, it's not like you two are known for frolicking in the sun. <laughs> <laughs> we have a history together, trust me. I got it. Some mm. history. He wants to put his face through the table, probably. Seems like Zemo was on the left side of his little booklet for a recovering addict. Hit list. You know what yeah. I mean? Like for, his his brainwashing is is being treated like an addiction, and this is some high risk behavior. Yeah, for him. Good comparison there. Yeah. Javoy. <sighs> ah, there he is. He's days are over. repeating his activation code, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just wanted to see how the new you reacts to the old words. Something is still in there. Mm. <sighs> Cat and mouse. He's toying with him. The time wasn't exactly a picnic. Mm. <laughs> For what it's worth, I'm sorry. Hmm. You were simply a means to a necessary end. Someone recreated the super soldier serum. Oh, he's That's surprised. news to him. He's interested. He's like, what? Mm -hmm. That got his attention. You are assuming Hydra has something to do with this, which is why you came to me, which means you are desperate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look, Zemo's going to mess with our minds, especially yours. Yeah, he will. What's the book you're reading? Machiavelli. <laughs> <laughs> subtle. Really subtle. Very subtle. So why would two prisoners randomly start fighting at that moment? Who knows? But <laughs> 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 right, the point, all those bodies flying around left and right, wouldn't be hard to slip down a hallway or two. 
This is a slippery slope, Bucky. I don't like how casual you're being about mm. this. It's unnatural. Yeah. No. It's Oh. He's already here. Whoa. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, Listen, what are you doing here? I didn't want to tell you because I knew you wouldn't let this happen, okay? What did you do? Well, maybe you should have thought about that, Bucky. If I may. No! <laughs> <laughs> I really think I'm invaluable. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Is Zemo going to be the comic relief in this episode? You don't make a move without our permission. There. Mm. Mm. He's still playing you. I keep making this comparison, but it's 100% Loki. There's always yeah. a longer game. He'll be on their side Did only as long as his interests are being When, when they started that, the yeah. riot, they were all at the, the games tables in like a gaming room. It's a big metaphor. Yeah. Yeah. Family over the generations. He's toying with them. Recruited. Nice. Ooh. This is Bucky's era right here. Oh, oh it's his mask. Nice. Classic, dude. First stop is a woman named Selby. Mid-level fence, I still have a line on. From there, we climb. Okay. <laughs> He's got this all planned out. Right. So he had but, stowed his little costume with his purple mask all this time in that car. Been rich? I'm a baron, Sam. <laughs> family was royalty until your friends destroyed my country. Yeah. <laughs> Who is Nakajima? If you touch that again, I'll kill you. He like pickpocketed Bucky's little hit No, list, but he, he specifically named list. the old man. Yeah. You didn't like it? I liked it. It is a masterpiece, James. Come. It captures the African American experience. He's out of line, <laughs> but he's right. <laughs> <laughs> no. Dang, dude. That is why we're going to Madripoor. What's nice. We're going to Madripoor! Hell yes. You will have to become someone you claim is gone. Oh, the Winter Soldier. Did they go in he's as gonna their, have like, to their criminal selves? He's going to have to be his criminal self. Yeah. The little charm, the necklace, the talisman is the yeah, the, the red hand logo. Mm. This is right back to what I was saying last week about how every single character in this show has been through unspeakable trauma. Nice. Oh, it's beautiful! <laughs> Look at that! Nice, dude. It's like... Tokyo meets Gotham City. Again, wrong universe, but it looks great. We have to do something about this. I'm the only one who looks like a pimp. <laughs> <laughs> Sophisticated, charming African rake named Conrad Mack, <laughs> a.k.a. the Smiling Tiger. The Smiling oh God! <laughs> That's fantastic. What is Why? that? Look like me, though. No matter what happens, we have to stay in character. Oh my Our God. lives depend on it. There's no margin for error. Nice. Power broker is watching. We have business to do with Selby. Oh, there she is, Sean Carter. Zini Soldat, Spiro Vatako. Zemo's like, I have protection. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, Zemo's loving this. He wants to draw that violence back out of him that, you know, he was like, it's still in there. Didn't take much for him to fall back into form. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's the offer? Tell us what you know about the super soldier serum. Dr. Wilfred Nagel is the man you want to thank or condemn, depending on what side of this you're on. Who's Sam? Uh-oh. Uh, Kill them! Carter! It's Sharon! Sharon! It's Sharon! She sniped. Oh, that was fast. Everybody in this town's a bounty hunter. <laughs> I can't run in these heels. <laughs> yes, she's everywhere. Well, this is too perfect. Yeah, hey. buddy. Yes. Hey, girl, hey. Badass. What an entrance. So what are you doing here? I stole Steve's shield, remember? I also took the wings for your ass so that you could save his ass from his ass. <laughs> I have a place in Hightown. You should be safe there for a while. Hmm. This is an interesting squad we've got assembled here. From Zemo to Sharon Carter. Yeah, real loud squad. <laughs> you know the whole hero thing is a joke, right? 
I mean, the way you gave up that shield deep down, you must know it's all hypocrisy. So you help us out, and I'll get your name clear. Try to stay out of trouble. We'll see what I can find. <sighs> trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? What do you want? We know you created the super soldier serum. Make me a better offer and I'll talk. Yeah, this guy's got some stones. Yeah. He just wants to delay them until his yeah. goons can show up. Yeah, buddy! Get it, Sharon! Oh! Every bounty hunter in the city is here. We gotta go. Oh! Damn, dude! Sharon has got skills! Oh! Recruited by the CIA. They had blood samples from an American test subject. Isaiah. Isaiah. Of serum in his system. Or one of the other black men that was experimented no, that, on. No, they were talking about Isaiah. Before I was able to complete my work, I turned to dust. The power broker was more than happy to fund the recreation mm. of my work. Yeah. How many vials did you make? Twenty. Carly Morgan Thau uh -huh. stole those. Uh, uh -huh. okay. She's lethal. Gosh, Sharon's Damn. got the moves like Jagger. Guys, we're seriously out of time here. <gasps> no! <gasps> Zemo doesn't want any super serum. Wait, they just like walked out of that unscathed? The magic of cinema. You went the wrong way. I cleared the way. I came out first. <laughs> You're supposed to follow me. And where are we now? Cut the time. It's, it's in every action movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there he goes. Here comes our baddie. Nice. There he is. Oh. <gasps> 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 Back to the states with us. I told you I can't. Oh, oh man. Thanks we'll see her again. I hope so. We'll see her again. Nagel was killed in Mandrapur. We've got the last of the serum. We've got all we need here. You seriously think Sam and Bucky would have broken a guy like Zemo out of prison? That's exactly what I think they did. They were yeah. just as desperate for leads as we were. But you and I are just going to run with this one for a minute. So I take it what happens next isn't a strictly on the books type thing, is it, Kat? Interesting. Yeah the job done do you really think they're gonna sweat us on the how that's not what i expected out of him mm -hmm. you've had six months worth of supplies just sat there in that building we're fighting for our lives well, you to you car? no now Whoa! this is the only language these people understand Wait, what did she just say it's the only language people understand oh so she did do that but without telling her without yeah Telling That's why her she partner. didn't want to get in her car. <laughs> Ooh. I'm gonna go on a walk. You good? Yeah. See you guys in a bit. What are you doing, Buck? What is going what on? What are these little things? You dropped something. I was wondering when you were gonna show up. You didn't go see more. Wakanda! <gasps> dude! Right? Alright, dude. Wow. Great episode. Yeah. A lot happened. So, there was a lot. And the funny thing is that, I mean, it really went deep on a couple sort of ideological, philosophical questions, but there was also a ton of action. Like, a lot physically happened Yeah, especially during the Sharon Carter stuff. It's just yeah. A lot of action from Sharon Carter. I like that they actually set Sharon Carter up to potentially even be an antagonist mm -hmm. because she ha will have her own sort of motives you know, she's she's on the run. She's living the criminal life. She doesn't necessarily believe that Sam can yeah. get her pardoned. Like, she yeah. doesn't, like, she already, like, yeah. stuck her neck out for them and she's got in trouble. She's not like, like, let's just so. get the band back together. Yeah. You know, there's some work to be done there. And there's she, some bridges to be repaired. Yeah, and she demonstrated that she's, like, a lethal weapon. She's that, a legit badass. Yeah, she's to be, to be um, reckoned Which with. is especially impressive because she's just human. Yeah. She's not enhanced in any way. 
her skills are learned. Yeah. So that's especially impressive and also a testament to how much she's been through. Yeah, and obviously, clearly, like, living in Madripoor, like, hardens you even more and yeah. makes you even more... Yeah. Crit. Like, it, like as soon as they, like, set out... it was There's an identical scene in The Mandalorian, which is about a bounty hunter, yeah. but we're, like... Somebody's like the main bounty hunter guy, like sends out the bounty hunter text, and then like you see everyone in the bar's phone starts getting a text. So it's like, oh, everyone here is a bounty hunter. Mm -hmm. Same scene here where they sent out the text, and you saw like a hundred people. And it's also once again like a very their um, bounty notification. It's a very good analogy to sort of the way something happens, and five seconds later, the entire world's on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's there's (laughs) a very real world sort of believability to that. Yeah, and there was definitely like a a lot more of the Carly Morgenthau stuff, Mm -hmm. and they had multiple scenes showing like. I said more humanization like we really get to see more of of like okay people aren't necessarily just like terrorists like they're no they're everybody has their own background and ideologies and different methodologies at play but what this is is everybody fighting to stay alive yeah was that was that person that died that was a woman that died that the dr nagel had mentioned that they went to find was that like carly's mother or something somebody connected to her i think there may i have a feeling there was a line where she said who it was, like maybe it was her favorite teacher or something oh, okay, like that. Yeah. I didn't catch it. It was, I was somebody like, oh. who was important to her. Yeah, yeah, but I think that's the salient point is that it's somebody from home, from Latvia. She's from Riga, Latvia, we have learned. And there's somebody that was like important to her um, previously or when she was in that settlement camp. Um, this episode really went hard on this topic we touched on last week, allocation of resources, Mm -hmm. that in fact, there are enough resources for everybody, whether that's like all the different populations in America or whether that's blipped and non-blipped people in this case, like whatever it is, Mm -hmm. we, we tend to work within a scarcity mentality, which is that there's not enough for all of us. If I give something to you, it means there's going to be less for me and mine. Mm -hmm. That's not actually true in the world the problem isn't that there isn't enough for everybody it's that too few people have too many of the resources to themselves yeah and what we really saw here and again i i'm not sure of the timing of when this was shot but it seems to me to be like a really direct pandemic reference whether that's whether that was intentional at the time or not yeah this idea of like going back to normal you know when it turns out that the way they things... They even had that, that advertisement at that the very crazy beginning. crazy commercial. WandaVision commercial, yeah. Yeah, it was like their version of the WandaVision commercial, but it is... Helping it's, people, like, reintegrate It's like when you stuff. see, like, inspirational be-all-that-you-can-be army messages or something, and there's something... It was so, like soft piano music and whatever yeah. but there's something really sinister about it you feel like you're being hypnotized into believing in this good life that doesn't actually exist yeah. and i think there's this this like growing realization for the characters on the show um that normal wasn't very good in the first place uh-huh. that the way things were was there was tons of inequity and racism and people being put in settlement camps and forgotten about and like things weren't great before the blip but then during the blip you had like you they literally achieved world peace right like Mm -hmm. during the blip so you can completely understand why somebody who's gotten the fuzzy end of the of the lollipop before the blip and then maybe was doing a little better during the blip doesn't want things to go back to normal Mm -hmm. and it is it's the same thing for us like a lot of folks right now in the world are saying well it would be a terrible shame if we just went back to normal Mm -hmm. whatever that means without adapting some of what we've learned during this pandemic or during this crisis um, into our worldview and into our way of doing things. So it just, it it felt so present and so relevant in that sense. And it really makes even these, even these terrorists very relatable and like very understandable to us. Yeah. Another thing that uh, went down was, um, that was unexpected was John Walker yeah. starting to look like he might want to break the rules, but because yeah. at, at first they showed him like rage on that guy, and you're like, okay, this is what we were expecting. Uh-huh. He's gonna want it so badly that he's gonna start like being an a hole up front, and he's just gonna yeah. start like you know beating people up unnecessarily. But then he he made that comment about like to um to Hoskins about like, what did he say? The thing about somebody with a better hand. Yes, exactly. Where, where he was, he's, he's talking about them. They're yeah, rogue. Yeah. They don't have to play by the rules. They're free agents. So essentially, it, it, they opened the door a little bit for John Walker maybe joining. Yeah, we've speculated. A little bit, but... but... Like, we really want to hate him. Yeah. And so far, they're not really giving us enough to hate him. But we've speculated that, like, he's going to go dark. That yeah, there really gonna, wasn't that much you know, of him in this episode. He, but he, he made an appearance. But we, we've had this idea that he's going to go dark at some point 
whether that's because he feels inadequate and wants to take super soldier serum to be like Steve, that could still happen, mm -hmm. or whether that's just like questioning his allegiances, realizing that America might not be the good guy that he thought it was. There are any number of possibilities that might still come to pass, but I was actually a little surprised to see him at this stage, like this early stage in the game, um, flirting with breaking the rules. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And Wasn't Car what I expected from him. Uh, let's see. Carly mentioned that, like, well, now that the Dr. Nago, uh, Zemo shot the Dr. Nago yeah. guy, so that basically, I mean, that's... I hate to say it this way, but it's like it's a good thing because it means like there's, there's, there's no only more serum. 20 vials of serum left or whatever. And I guess Carly has all of them. And she yeah. implied that she was going to like they want their intention was to give the serum to some kids. Yeah. Well, this, again, some, like oppressed kids. There's basically. so much like it's it's not a good thing or a bad thing. There's moral ambiguity. There's more moral ambivalence in this position. Like she wants to do that. Well, she did blow up the car like right. at the end. And it's she was like, that's the only language people understand. And even so. her partner was so shocked. He didn't know yeah. that that was part of her plan. Um, maybe she's right. I, you know, maybe that is in some cases the only language that people understand, but whether or not that justifies taking human lives, you know, deliberately, uh, that's yeah. that's the, that's the sort of morally ambiguous or morally culpable part of it. Yeah. And I mean, the thing about like giving it to the kids, she wants to give them the ability to fend for themselves. She wants to give these kids the yeah. ability to. It's not about making a super army right. to defeat she's the not, world. She's it's not. She's not looking like out for herself. Equalizing the imbalance. She's trying. And, yeah. Yes, she's trying to provide them some sort of equity that the rest of the world isn't giving them. But on the other hand. When you think about, like, medical experiments on children, that's, yeah. like, what the Nazis did. Yeah, but furthermore, we're also talking about, like, Isaiah being experimented on, and as soon as Dr. Nagel, like, mentioned that, Sam got, like, oh, man. Yeah, like, well, exactly. Because now he's got a personal... You know, this is, this is the two really clear references, because we've got, like, Bucky, World War II era, mm -hmm. and Isaiah Bradley, you know, having been in that same era, we've had, like, America experimenting on black people, which, as we've established, actually happened. Yeah. The most obvious example is the Tuske Tuskegee syphilis study, um, which is clearly, like, a direct inspiration for the Isaiah Bradley super soldier story. Sure, yeah. But we had America doing that, and you had, like, you know, Nazi Germany, uh, Mengele, Joseph Mengele, you know, experimenting on, on children. Yeah. Um, who were, you know, people, children who were in concentration camps. So there isn't a really good history here. This yeah. thing that she wants to do that she thinks is, like, noble and equalizing in some way has a really ugly history. Yeah. And and regardless of, of her motivations, like, children can't consent. Mm. Children can't consent. So... Yeah. Like that's interesting. It's not okay. You know, another <laughs> thing that I particularly enjoyed from like an artistic standpoint was that there was a lot of like audiovisual candy in this episode, like oh, the Madripoor scene. It was beautiful, really nice to look at, and then so also pretty. that combined with like a lot of that like early era like forties music, like you mentioned the Edith Piaf. And then they had a and... new wave song. Yeah, in there was his a lot lab, of just a lot of good like, audiovisual yeah. candy that just made this. It was just enjoyable stylish. to watch. It was yeah. like stylish and had even a great if aesthetic. you watched it, yeah, like it was. I just liked that element yeah. about this. Um, There's and... this, what I'm really interested in is this sort of, um, this moral slippery slope that Bucky is on. Yeah. Because Sam seems to be quite clear. Like, he's he's a free agent. He's not by the book. He's not going to play by the rules. And he's obviously getting increasingly pissed off about what the country he serves has done to people like him. Mm -hmm. But he still seems very clear, like, no more of this shit mm -hmm. to, Nemo, to, to Zemo. I almost called him Nemo. Um, he's like, don't do that again. He's really upset that he shot the guy. Whereas Bucky seems to be moving really quickly towards um, being willing to break a few eggs to make an omelet. Yeah. And that's rule number two. Don't hurt anyone. Yeah. And then, oh, man, I, like, I knew this was, like, going to, like, pop up again. But, like, Zemo had, had the little booklet. And he, he's like, who's Nagi, oh, Nagi, whatever that guy's name is. He pushed his buttons. And that immediately made Bucky be like, cause, and I got that impression right away of like, don't you touch him. Mm -hmm. like, or like, it was just very like, he's very protective over that guy and it just makes me feel even more like that guy's in Do danger. Do you remember in, Zemo's gonna in the first that guy at episode some point. we were like, someone put a bubble around that old man yeah. because if anything happens to him, Bucky is gonna snap. Yeah, because actually one thing I was gonna say at the beginning of this episode was like, oh yeah, we didn't get any more of that old man in the second episode. Like, I, th I feel hopefully we'll come back to him, but we didn't get I him again so. in this cute. episode. But hopefully when we do come back to him, he's not gonna be like harmed or killed or 
I mean, he's I know. gonna be put in danger. Yeah. I mean, I think they're they're not. It's a Chekhov's gun. They don't give you that detail without planning to use it later. Yeah. That like he has this special significance yeah. for Bucky. That and they've obviously like they kept playing up the uh, the Sam Bucky like brotherly fight relationship mm-hmm. where like they're literally getting shot at and Sharon's like Sharon's shooting. like mom has to step in like And they're boys, like arguing stop. in the back seat basically. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's like exactly. literally don't be mean to your brother. Yeah. Like, <laughs> All right guys, this was an awesome episode. Uh, please let us know what you thought in the comments below. Let us know if you're excited for the next episode. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you next week. Bye guys. Bye. Thank you.